Hello and welcome back to this new video of mine. As basically in every video, I'm very excited for this one because I'm gonna talk to you guys about all the books I've read so far this year, which are over 20 and I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. But I'm also gonna keep it real with you guys. My goal for Goodreads this year was to read 70 books and I'm over eight books behind. So <laughs> I have my Goodreads open right over here and here are all the beautiful books stacked behind me so that you can see how many we have left to go. So if you're new here and you don't have a clue as to what I'm reading and what my genres are that I'm enjoying, I mostly read romance, fantasy, I always need a little bit of love sprinkled in, you know? I just need that for my soul. I usually don't read thrillers or mystery, suspense, that type of stuff. So I did not tip my toes into that one yet. If you're interested in me doing that though, leave me a comment down below with one of the emojis I'm gonna put up here because I am afraid, but I feel like it could be an interesting video because I've really never in the 21 years of me living on this planet, I've never read one of these. Just let me know that I can make the video for you guys. But besides that, I also read nonfiction. And just a little disclaimer, I'm gonna put the nonfiction at the end of this video so that the people who are more the fiction readers, you can just enjoy the first part. And if you're interested in the nonfiction, you can stick around or you can just skip to that part just so you are aware. So this is not in any specific order, not in a chronological order, I just put them in there. And I was like, I'm just gonna roll with the punches right now. I did not feel like organizing it by month. I'm not that type of person, so you're not gonna get that either. <laughs> not on this channel. Let's start with the first book. I gotta say, for me, because I forgot which ones I put that way, it's also a surprise. So, kind of fun. Oh, okay, so the first book. <laughs> I don't know, I'm having so much fun with this. The first book we're having here is The Good Part by Sophie Cousins. Also, just so you're aware, I'm very bad with names. Just so you know. Hi. I'm the problem, it's me. So in this, we're following Lucy and she wishes to be skipping to the good part of her life. She's very unhappy with the way her life is going at the moment and she feels like it's never ever gonna get better. So when she finds a wishing machine on one of the crappiest nights of her life, she decides she's just gonna put a coin into that wishing machine and wish for a better life for herself. Then suddenly she w wakes up, I don't know, 10 years later or something like that. So she just wakes up multiple years later to a handsome man that she never even met. She suddenly has kids, she has her dream job, she's successful and she's like, what is going on here? Like, what is happening? Where am I? Am I even the same person? And suddenly she aged everything. She just doesn't remember anything that happened the past years prior. She only remembers putting the coin into the wishing machine. By following her, trying to figure out the mystery as to if she just lost her memory, if she just woke up not knowing anything, how she navigates life as someone who doesn't remember anything. If she would have amnesia, I feel like that's also a deeper topic that we covered here. Like just the confusion that you experience when you don't remember things. And I feel like that was done very well. But then also how she just has to navigate life suddenly being pushed into something completely new that she's never experienced. And also how is that gonna impact the relationship? And also what if she can go back, right? Like she tries to go back, but what if she does and then that life that she always wanted is not gonna happen. So there are a lot of deeper topics discussed in here. Sometimes it had a few lengths. I was invested and I loved the kid in here. And sometimes I feel like kids are not done so well. <laughs> wow, sounds really weird. No, but sometimes I feel like in books, kids are not written that nicely. Here, I just loved that little guy. He was so cute. He was so fun. And in general, that entire family that was being described there. Also her job life and everything. Everything just seemed realistic. So I would call this woman fiction. I expected this to be a little bit of a romance, but it wasn't really, which I also don't mind. I don't know what's happening to me, but I was completely hooked on this. And I felt like there were so many different heavier topics as well. So yeah, we're gonna talk about miscarriages, all these type of things. So if this is something that might trigger you, just be aware that those are heavier topics being discussed in here. Yeah, the writing style wasn't, it wasn't like seven year slip type of vibe, you know? Like it wasn't something as poetic or, I don't know, Emily Henry. So I feel like writing style wise, it wasn't my favorite. It was a very fun read though. I mean, you can tell that I remember everything that happened in this book and that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> like usually I'm not that great at remembering things. I think on Goodreads I gave it three stars because I thought I would give it three and a half. Oh no, I gave it four stars. Yeah, and I agree with that. I'm gonna give it four stars because now that I think back on it, I feel like this was a really good read. I can recommend this one to you if it sounds intriguing to you. Just know that there is no real romance aspect in this. 
And now we get to the next one, which is Twisted Love. I recently uploaded an entire video on this, so if you're curious on my thorough opinion on this, just check out that video. I gave this three and a half stars. I feel like I could also knock it down to three, actually, now after I think back on it. It was okay. I cannot fully recommend it to you because I feel like it was just for my liking a little bit too toxic. And also I'm not, I'm not an Alex Volkov type of girly, you know? I don't... I'm not obsessed with him. I don't know. I feel like this was for sure the weakest part in the entire series because now we're gonna get to the other ones. Next up, we have Twisted Games. I did have higher hopes for this one actually. It's a bodyguard and princess trope. So they're basically not able to be together because he's her bodyguard and she has to rule the country and whatever. I thought because, okay, wow. Cannot finish a sentence right now apparently. If she needs a bodyguard, then there has to be some action, right? But there was almost none of that happening. There was more action in the first book than in this one. It didn't feel like she was ever in danger. So I was like, why is he even there? You know? And the ending was a bit predictable. Not in that complete sense. I was a bit confused as you can see in my video. There was some huge confusion going on, but still was a bit predictable. Then we go over to Twisted Hate. Oh, I didn't even give you a star rating. Oops. I think I gave this one three and a half stars. Yeah. Yeah, three and a half. It's just because I was disappointed. I was hyping it up for such a long time in my mind and I was like, this is gonna be amazing. And then it was, it was okay. But I was giggling. I was laughing. It's a fun read, but I'm not gonna remember all of it, you know? Then we have Twisted Hate. I still remember to this day that bar scene. <laughs> I think it was within the first 100 pages. I just keep replaying it in my head. And that's when I know I have a lot of scenes from this book that I keep on replaying. Of course, there is a huge controversy about what he did towards the end as to the third act breakup and everything that happened around that. And I am not a huge Josh Shen fan since then because I feel like he messed up a little. But he also just has a funny character in general. If we subtract the thing that happened in the third act breakup, and if we just look at his character overall, and also Jules is just the most fun person to be around. Like she has like so many depths and layers and we really got to know her here. So that's why it's one of my favorite books of the series, just because I connected to the characters and they had great banter. This was the one where I really felt like the animosity and the anger and the hate between them at first. Yeah, it was just a very fun read, a little bit too long for my liking. I don't need 500 pages of a romance book personally, <laughs> but it was fun. I think I gave this 4.25 to a 4.5. I think I'm gonna stick with 4.25. I can definitely recommend this one to you, but also here, trigger warnings, toxic men everywhere. I already said in my video, Anna Huang's book boyfriends are basically all just a different shade of morally gray. Like, it's just what it is. <laughs> like, you cannot tell me otherwise. But that's okay. I just had to get used to that. And after four books, I was a bit exhausted because it just felt like I kept on repeating the same story over and over and over again. Whereas if you read it maybe once every few months and then you finish up the series, I think then you're gonna love it. I think if I would have spread it out a little more, I would have enjoyed it more. Then we have Twisted Lies, the thickest one, almost 600 pages. It's equally as high up as Twisted Hate for me, even though the beginning got me into a reading slump because the first 150 pages were so dragged out. I was so bored. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me. I just was not into it. We're following Christian Harper here and we're following Stella Alonso and Stella is the fourth character from the friend group and she is an influencer, fashion influencer actually, and she moves into his apartment complex and he's is basically boy obsessed or man obsessed like he is completely in love with her but he doesn't want her to know but he does everything for her basically it's all these men in these books but we got way more insights into her world and as to why she is the way she is yeah it just took me a while to get into it i guess and then once i got into it i was hooked but i think half of the book i was a bit bored sometimes the second half really got me there towards the end it felt a bit rushed though just saying. Still, these two are the best of the series. I can recommend those to you if you're interested. I do recommend to read the entire series though, because yeah, it's just a build up, you know, and you're getting to know all the other characters. It all starts to make sense. I feel like this one wrapped everything up very well. It was fun to read the entire series. I'm glad I did it, but it's not one of my favorites. Like, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. If you wanna have a more thorough opinion and my life reactions, then check out the video. I'm gonna link somewhere here. Then we have this is a placeholder. I did not read The Stolen Air. I read this one last year. I read The Prisoner's Throne. I have never experienced this in my entire reading journey ever. I've never experienced that an author within a series started switching point of views. First book was first person. This one was third person. 
It was just the second part of a series, why would you suddenly change the point of view? I need coffee for this because that made me, wow, that shocked me a little. I really loved the first book. It got me out of such a long reading slump and I was so excited. I was like, oh my god, finally. Also, the writing is just supreme. The way she just creates fantastical words, Holly Black is just a pro at that, to be honest. It just took me a way longer time to get back into the other one. What happened, first of all, because it's been over a year and all these politics, I don't remember anything. Like, <laughs> I forget stuff, you know? And then with the second book, especially since it was then written in a different POV, it was just confusing to me. What am I even reading? Like, that's not the same book I finished up a year ago, you know? We're not picking up at the same point, it felt like. Also that I was scared that one of them is gonna die, because if you're not gonna put them in the two point of views, then something has to happen to one of them, right? The ending completely shocked me, not gonna lie, that tore me apart. I was reading it on the train and I was almost crying. I was completely taken into this world at one point. It, as I said, it took me a bit longer, but I still enjoyed it afterwards, after a while. And then the ending just felt rushed. Like the last 10 to 20 pages, I was like, huh? that's how we're gonna wrap this up now? I was on a roller coaster with this one. I loved it. No, first I hated it, then I loved it, and then I was confused, and then I was like, what is going on? And then I was like, hmm, a bit unsatisfied, but still satisfied in a way, because it just still happened the way I wanted it to, but I was also like, what? As you can tell, I'm confused with this one. I think I gave it four stars. Let me check my good reads. I'm confused. Yeah, I gave this four stars, and I actually stand by that. The Stolen Air, almost a five-star read for me. I think I put this 4.75. I think afterwards, like, if I would reread this, I would put this at a five. I didn't even tell you what we're covering here. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just kept on rambling about the book, didn't even tell you what this is about. So the first one is based on the Elfheim trilogy. What is it called? And here, this is a spin-off series from that other series. We're following the younger brother Oak and Ren, which we also already met in the first trilogy. It was a long time since I read those, so I didn't really remember much. But then when I read this, I was like, ooh, I like Oak. I like grown-up Oak, you know? I was resonating more with him. I was like, okay, he's cute. At first, like, when he was a kid, I found him a bit annoying, but that's okay. I mean, he's a kid, so what can he do? So yeah, here we're following Ren, and she's the child of the court of Teeth. And it's just a fantasy romance. Yeah, as I said, a lot of politics. I feel like this one is more romance-heavy, though, than the entire series of the Wicked King trilogy. I can recommend the first one. I can also recommend the second one. But just be aware that it's a bit confusing, because why would she change POVs? I thought I was capping for a second. I was reading this again. I was like, looking back into this one and read the first page again if I was just remembering wrong, you know? But no, I was right. She just did a weird thing. Then I listened to two books as audiobooks. I'm talking about the Maxon Hall series here. I only have the second part here. I've read the... F oh no, I actually have the first one here too. Haha. <laughs> Save me. I've read this, I don't even know, I think I finished this. Yeah, I finished this five years ago, six years ago, don't remember anything. And then on Amazon Prime, the Max and Hall series came out about Ruby and James. And I fell in love with the series, but then I felt like, okay, I remember that the book, the first book is similar to the first season of the series. So I was like, okay, let me just pick up the second one. And I remember why I did not remember anything about this book. I was just bored. Like this entire edition is beautiful. I would like to have all of them, but I gotta say, I was so bored by this writing style. I stopped at 116. I can put this out now because I read it. So the stuff I always use as bookmarks, you know. And then I saw that on Spotify you can listen to them. By the way, this is in German, so just be aware if you're not German. I don't think they have the audiobooks or the books in English yet, but you can watch the series. Highly recommend. I was then listening to the audiobook and I thought, this is way better than reading it. Because as an audiobook, you can just listen to it in the background and it's not as annoying if there's not much happening with the writing style. So I did finish the second as an audiobook and the third one as an audiobook, which means I basically read two books. Can I recommend the series to you? If you want to know what's gonna happen in the actual like Amazon Prime series, then I can recommend you the audiobooks. I cannot recommend you the books though, personally. Personally, don't hate on me, okay? Yeah, it was just not my type of writing style. I was just a bit bored sometimes. That's okay. I mean, it just happens. You know, everyone has their own preference. I did like the storyline. I would rate this... I think the second one I might even rate two and a half. 2.75 stars. As I said, audiobook made it way better, but the thing is, I was just not invested, like not that much. Okay, so the second one you really could tell 
that it was just an in-between part so that was fine but then the third one wrapped it up very nicely and we got a few more background stories we got to see a few of the other characters so that was fun i did like that aspect of it and i feel like in general the third one was the best one from the series so far even though we got to see less from ruby and james but just in general the way they wrapped it up was really great or the way mona Kasten wrapped it up the third one i would rate three stars i'm just glad i finished the series so that i know what's gonna happen when i watch the next episodes when they come out i don't know in one or two years it's just i think you can save yourself the energy these books were so hyped here in germany and i feel like i'm the only one who didn't like them you know but i just couldn't get into it and i have a friend she also couldn't get into it i don't know what's wrong with me or us <laughs> next up we have the third no the first five star read of the year so excited to call this book by emily henry a five star read because i was uncertain if i would like it or not i love the premise of this one but i feel like emily henry books now that i think oh don't hate me on this but now that i think back on beach read i rated it a five star but i feel like it was also just the vibes it was giving me and the writing style i really enjoyed too but I don't remember much that happened in this book. And here I was more invested, here I felt like a stronger connection to the characters and the love story. And I feel like maybe... I like funny story more than Beach Read. So I don't know if I would actually rate Beach Read lower now than a 5 star. And that's why I'm not gonna reread it anytime soon. <laughs> so that I don't put myself into that predicament. I annotated this one. I loved it. I can highly recommend this one to you. We're following Daphne and Miles here. Okay, this is always so exhausting to explain. I explained it to you in another video already. I also have a reading vlog on this one. Okay, I'm gonna link this one somewhere here too. So we're following Daphne and Miles and Daphne and Miles, at least Daphne, she was engaged to Peter and Miles was with Petra and then Peter and Petra, they were basically childhood best friends and suddenly they decided, hey, I love you, let's be together, let's dump the other person, you know? So then Petra and Peter, they ended up together. Daphne had to move out of her home that she built with Peter. <laughs> so confusing and then Daphne and Miles decided that they move in together because she needed a place to live and he also needed a roommate so they just live together in the beginning I was confused I was like is he the male interest is he the male love interest like what is happening because he was not at all being described as the, as the hot guy that has like I don't know beautiful eyes and a hot beard whatever you know and that has his life put together or anything we just experienced him in his breakup phase and that was so interesting because I've never read a book so far where the male love interest was actually portrayed as a normal person and he was just real. At one point I really started falling for him, as did Daphne, can highly recommend, five stars. It was just fun. And also for the summertime now, perfect book. Talking about summertime, my summer TBR video is coming up anytime soon as well. Don't know, next week, this week, who knows, but sometime soon. <laughs> you're gonna get a may t may tbr no may is already over a summer tbr so stay tuned for that one moving on to a little novella just so you know this is the novella to powerful no powerless this is called powerful so confusing by lauren roberts also i have a vlog on how i read powerless so I'm gonna link it somewhere here as well sorry so many references i can make at this point in this one we follow adina and what was the guy meg I'm not gonna spoiler the ending for you of Powerless, but it was a bit chaotic and it was a bit sad. It was actually very, very, very sad. So I was afraid of this one. I was not knowing what to expect going into this. I've never read a novella before, I think. But even if I did, I think this was the best one I would have ever read. This one was really, really good. I did like both characters. Of course, I felt a strong connection to Peyton and Kai because we had like double the amount of pages with the two of them. So here I felt like their relationship was a bit rushed. I did not expect to have love in this one though so i was really happy about that everything just felt rushed and then i realized that this was only over the course of one month so i was like oh so it was indeed rushed i don't know i just felt very sad towards the end but also it made me happy in a way she got her own story now and that also shows that she had a life outside what resolved around Peyton because Peyton was always the center of her life basically like for five years they've been stuck together and they were like doing everything together and Edina's life was basically revolving around Peyton and now that we had her own story it felt like she had her own character and she had her own life and she started building something for herself you know she was not that strong female character she was more of a soft life type of girly and I love that <laughs> it's like that's me <laughs> 
I'm not gonna be the type of girl that's gonna put a dagger to your throat, you know, that's not me. I would never, I could never actually. <laughs> I love this one. I think I gave this four stars. I don't think I can ever give a novella five stars though. Not that I've read so many, but hey. I also annotated a few aspects. <laughs> what was that? And also I wanted to tell you about one line that I annotated. Wow, can I find it now? Because it was really funny. Ha, okay, I got it. I'm really more of a lover than a fighter, Adina said. I highlighted this because I was like, I'm also more a lover than a fighter, you know, which is what it is. But then it was just divined by the universe, it felt like, because a few moments later, I saw on uh, YouTube Shorts, I think it was, an interview with Keanu Reeves. And what he said in this, and I had to put it in this book, but you've got to be a fighter to be a lover. I was like, what are the odds that the moment I read this and highlight this i see keanu reeves talking about this but he's right like you gotta be a fighter to be a lover that just stuck with me and in that combination i just love that quote so i wanted to share that with you just a little positivity over here next up the first Lynn painter book i've ever read happily never after this was a very very fun read we're following sophie and max and max is crashing her wedding so that's how we start out this entire scenery and she's actually very happy about that out of reasons i'm not gonna specify right now but here comes the kicker a few months later he reaches out and he asks her if she wants to join him being wedding crashers so that's what they do that's what they do in their free time and <laughs> That's how they basically start falling for each other. But she is someone who does not believe in love. The question is, can Max get her to believe that there is that one true love out there? That was a really cute book. It was really funny to read. I just think about this and I smile. It was also a perfect summer read, just so you know. A lot of people talk about her older releases, like better than the movies and stuff, but this one was great. I think I gave this four and a half stars. Listen, at first I gave it, I think, even five. I don't know right now. <laughs> I'm stuck between a four and a half and a five star. Let's put it at 4.75 and I might knock it up at a later point in time. I don't know yet, but I can recommend this one to you. She was such a businesswoman and he was a business guy and they were both like, ugh. I just love both of them. I loved both these characters. Amazing book, highly recommend. Then we're gonna talk about Pestilence, which is the first book from the Four Horsemen series. For a long, long, long time I was interested in this one and I finally read it and I am a bit disappointed. Just a little. So we're following Pestilence here, duh. And Sarah, I think her name is. And she tries to kill the horseman while he is basically trying to doom the entire earth and tries to kill everyone who's living on there by spreading the pestilence. And she tries to kill him to save humanity, but instead she gets taken by him and he drags her along on his quest. Quest. Ha. <laughs> so yeah, they start falling in love, so it's like a romantic type of thing. A bit of like end of the world, doomsday type of stuff. There were a lot of different topics discussed in here about belief and religion and whatever, so I think the author tried to make it a bit more than surface level, but at one point I was like, why is that girl falling for him that much? Because I was not, I was not really into him. Like Pestilence was not my type of guy. I was not fully in love with him. I did not hate this book. I saw a lot of people on Goodreads actually bashing this to the ground. I feel like it was decent. It was very repetitive though. So be aware that at one point they're just gonna keep on being on their quest and traveling and then he's gonna kill people and then they're gonna be traveling again. So like it was always the same scheme. But at one point I was like a bit bored. Also, I don't even remember. I just remember the epilogue, but I don't remember how they resolved everything. Then we got introduced to war coming in the epilogue, so this is the next book coming up, and I am interested. I'm not gonna say I'm not interested at all, that would be a straight up lie. I love the covers, I think they're so nice, especially next to each other, I would love to have the series. <laughs> I gave this three stars, I think, maybe three and a half. It's not worth more though. Sorry. Pestilence did not seem like someone I would want to sleep with, you know, and that was like a lot of smut in there, so I was like, I don't know. I'm not having it. Mixed feelings about this one because my hopes were over here and I got knocked down and then I saw Goodreads reviews being down here <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what to think anymore. If you're interested in the story, definitely read it. I think what I've heard is that the series is gonna get better as well, so I might read the other ones still, as I said, but just be aware. It's not the best book ever. It's also not the worst. So if you're interested, go for it. Then we have a fan favorite, as you might call it, Magnolia Parks. Everyone and their mother has read it at this point, it feels like. And I loved it. 
as you can see from the tabs, but I did not give it a five stars. And I don't know if I even need to give you a rundown, but we're following Magnolia and BJ here. They're a British socialite and they've just been growing up together. They've been spending their entire life together in that specific friend group as well. And they broke up a few years ago because of something that happened between them. And they just cannot get rid of each other. So it's basically that toxic back and forth. They're trying to avoid each other, but they cannot. But they're also not really together anymore. But everyone thinks that they should be. I was surprised, thoroughly surprised by how much I loved this. And I do still think about this one a lot, like gotta say, and I'm really excited for the third book as well. It made me sob, it made me upset, and that's the reason, that's the only reason why I cannot give it five stars, because of the amount of anger I felt inside of me when I finished this book. I was completely devastated, I was like, how can this happen, what is happening, you know, and I was so upset. And that amount of toxicity I felt, I feel like I cannot with good conscience give it a five star just because of the negativity of it all and the toxicity of it all besides that great writing beautiful really everything about this is beautiful and these are also great for an annotating exercise so i can make a video about annotating too if you want if you want to get into annotating if you want to learn how to i feel like these books are really great for that because you can just analyze the different characters and their dynamics and everything it's just so fun and from the same series i also read daisy hates even annotated more I guess in this one. I gave this four stars. I feel like this one is a bit lower for me than this one. I don't know exactly why though. It just took me longer to get through. That's for one. I feel like we had more POVs in this one which confused me a little because there were so many different people and also it wasn't really about socialite anymore because Daisy is a bit more yeah isolated and I love just the friend group aspect of Magnolia Parks here so much. We're following Daisy and Christian here Christian is in that friend group of Magnolia and now we also understand because they happen at the same time almost we start to understand why Christian was acting the way he was acting you know everything starts to make more sense still toxicity to the max <laughs> but if you're into that why not these are like my babies I don't know I just love them I can recommend them to you if you can handle toxicity because otherwise stay away stay far 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 away okay Thank you. Another book that I completely devoured and loved was Flawless by Elsie Silver. I recently read this. Wow. I did not think I would love it as much as I did. I thought this would just be an easygoing romance, whatever. You know, I thought this would be like three or four stars. I think I'm gonna give this five stars. <sighs> I just love this. I want to stay in this world forever. This is actually the, did I say it already? Chestnut Springs series. We're following, I forgot her name again, of course. We're following Summer and... Can I remember his name? Red. Ha! Very good. We're following Summer and Red in this one. So Red is a bull rider and he, she basically gets hired as his PR agent to follow him around for two months so that he doesn't mess up anymore because in the beginning of this book he messed up severely and lost a few clients that actually led him to lose money which also led the PR agency to lose money. So she now has to step in and keep him from doing any more bad things basically. And we have Oh, that was a voice crack right there. We have Grumpy Sunshine to the max in this one. <laughs> Loved it. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Small town. Also, I don't know because they've been traveling a lot in this one. But also, I didn't know I was into bull riding and cowboys. But suddenly I'm obsessed. For me personally, at one point it was a bit too much smut. I was just not really interested in that. But there were so many beautiful quotes in this one. So many great lines and just something that changed. It just changed something in my DNA. She has that mindset as to what if these were my last few moments living on this earth? Would I want to feel like this? And I'm like mind blown. Because yeah, of course, like then it's not really worth it to be stressing about things and to be upset about things someone else did to you. So she's just like a force of pure positivity. Really great book. Really excited for the second one. I need to order this one because wow. Can recommend if you've not read it already. Also perfect for the summer. And lastly, another fictional book I've read. I read Dance of Thieves as an ebook, so I'm gonna insert it here as well. Really, really, really good book. I don't remember which characters we're following here. Let me check my Goodreads because I'm lost. It is giving enemies to lovers, boy obsessed, beautiful, fast paced. Even though it is a very lengthy book, it was great. I think I gave it four and a half stars. I did not feel like it was a complete five star because sometimes there were too many time jumps and we did not get 
enough time with the characters sometimes I would have liked for them to be more together and I don't like always these time jumps when it comes to having a fantasy romance because I need a slow build up as to why they are starting to like each other and the ending confused me to the max I'm like what is going on now I want to read the second part very 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 soon I actually don't know if I can recap this entire book for you because it's very confusing always with the fantasy books they get me we have Cassie and Jace Bellinger so she is sent by the Queen to investigate on the Bellingers and Jace's father recently died who was the ruler of the section they are living in I don't remember what it's called sorry and Cassie is being sent over there to investigate on the Bellingers but then now Jace is the patriarch so they are like opposing ruling kingdoms so this is already not good and then something very unlucky happens and they are stuck together and since then he's just obsessed with her I feel like this is the worst summary I could have given you. I can just tell you it's a very good book and if you're into romanticy, read this one. Just saying. Very amazing. It took me 50 pages to get into because it's a lot of politics but once you got it, you got it and then you're gonna get a good romance out of it. So definitely worth it. Feature Chantal talking here because I forgot one book because I forgot to talk about Girl Abroad by L. Kennedy. I DNF this book this year. It was my only DNF so far I think. I started reading this. Our main character is moving from the US to London and we have a severe love triangle in this and at one point I was just so annoyed because also L. Kennedy I feel like she just always chooses the same type of man and I was having a clear favorite as to who I wanted to win this love triangle and he did not, he did not, I skipped to the end and he did not win and I was like I'm not gonna continue reading this bullshit because I just felt like it was just a bit childish at one point. I don't know, everything they were talking about I was like what is happening, like you have no connection, I did not feel the sparks between them and I was like I don't I don't see this I don't see this happening I didn't finish it it was a fun read for the time being for the first half of it I just felt like it was too much of a back and forth and ooh, who should I choose should I choose the musician should I choose the, the football player <coughs> too much for me too much I'm sorry and if you've read this one and if you've loved it please let me know it in the comments down below your opinion because I need to have your opinion on this maybe I'm just too harsh sometimes I don't know and with that now let's get into the non-fiction I do not rate non-fiction just so you know because I feel like giving non-fiction a star rating is not really fair because it's always depending on the life situation I'm in at the moment and also you might have different experiences in your life as to why you might need this book more than I do right now so I made may rate something two stars whereas for you it would be a five star because you just had a different life experience so I'm not gonna do that I can just tell you what they're about and if I if I found them helpful or not first up we have the super attractor by Gabriel Bernstein I've had this on my TBR for years basically as all my nonfiction <clears throat> let's not talk about that but great book it's not only about manifesting it's also about spirituality and connecting with yourself and your guides how to overcome fear it just tackles a lot of different aspects and I can see myself reaching out for this whenever I need guidance on a new chapter in my life basically so first it covers things like visualization that there's enough to go around that you can always have enough because there's enough abundance out there so that you can also get your piece of the cake basically but also just in general as I said later on we talk more about the deeper spiritual things that really helped me in my life and yeah grounded me a lot she also has a few exercises in here meditation exercises really good book really really good book can recommend then we have a teeny 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 tiny book that I saw on Pinterest somewhere I thought this would be a bit bigger and <laughs> This is so small, like look at this. The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, a pocketbook guide to fulfilling your dreams. It's a cute book, like, it's a cute refresher, it's a cute reminder. I can see myself throwing this in my purse just to remind myself of some positive quotes at times, but was it the best book I've ever read? No, because how can it be, <laughs> you know? I don't think that was the goal. It felt a little bit like a cash grab to me, just a little. I was a bit disappointed when I received this in the mail, just saying, but overall we're talking about karma here, we're having a lot of different spiritual laws, you know, and I feel like these are things that are universally very important, very interesting, but the author repeats himself a lot, a lot, lot, lot. <laughs> And that's very crazy to me in such a short book. I can recommend this to you to an extent. If you're not a big reader and you want to just get the basics of spirituality and you just want to have a little bit of positivity sprinkled into your day, then you can get this. 
but if you're into self-help books you're gonna laugh at this I think like don't even try <laughs> sorry second to last book we have is You're a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. I did read the You're a Badass book a few years back. I finished this one recently. It took me over a year to get through. Not because of her writing style. Her writing style is very fun, very engaging. I don't know, I just feel like self-help books, sometimes you need them to a specific time in your life. And yeah, this one was a great one though. Great book, can recommend. She covers a lot of basics, but also her own perspective, her own life experience. She works with a lot of clients, so that's very interesting. And she's very witty, very funny, just a very engaging author. So for self-help, this is not as dry as you might expect it to be, which is awesome. And the last book I want to talk to you about is Girl Code by Kara Elwell Leiber. I often listen to her podcast, or not, not so often anymore, but I used to. This is a very short and quick read. And it's just for the female entrepreneur, for success, sanity and happiness. Four years back, I think I bought this. I was not having a clue about business. Like, let's just be honest here. Now I spend more time researching about this stuff and now this makes a bit more sense to me. So it was now, for that period of my life, very helpful, very interesting, but it wasn't something that I would always look back on, you know? Like, I don't think I will pick this up much anymore they she had very very cute quotes in here like for example one by lady gaga some women chose to follow men and some women choose to follow their dreams if you're wondering which way to go remember that your career will never wake up and tell you that it doesn't love you anymore facts but i am a hopeless romantic so what can one do i don't think happiness is a gift we are given unfortunately it's a path we choose to embark upon and we have to beat that path out for ourselves. Basically what this book contains are a lot of interviews with very successful women that made it for themselves and it's also very about female empowerment. But is it the best book I've ever read on this topic? I don't think so. If I were to choose <laughs> between these two, if you want to create success and wealth in your life, I would still choose this one because here you get a bit more of a step-by-step -step. here just more about your mindset this is also about mindset but this one covers more and that's also making sense because this is shortly over 100 pages yeah this is about 150 and this is almost 300 so makes sense to me that you cover more in this that was it thank you so 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 much for watching these are all the books i've read so far i'm very proud actually 21 books is not bad even though this one tiny one i don't know if we count this one but hey, have a beautiful and blissful day and I'm gonna see you next week. Bye!